Project Guru. 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 Welcome to Novorussia Rocks Radio Station, downtown Donetsk. This is Zach Novak, your American. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Okay, as you know, we had a horrible, sad situation over the weekend, uh, especially the last 24 hours. Heavy bombing by Nazi Ukraine, atrocities, there were casualties and deaths. But uh, let's begin with some news. Nazi Ukraine bombarded. Kobievska district of Donetsk this morning about 5.30 in the morning, badly wounding a woman and child. Bombs hit the town of Kobievska district. A direct hit on the street. Kobievska 169 completely destroyed a house. At the moment, there is no information on the status of the woman and child. Also this morning, the western part of Gorlovka is currently under constant bombardment by Nazi Ukraine APU. According to officials, Nazi APU opened heavy fire on the city at approximately 3 o'clock in the morning. At the moment, the shelling continues. Information about the devastation and victims is not known at this time due to continuation of bombing. Also, as a result of yesterday's shelling in the village of Zayetsvo, there was damage to power lines. Subject to ceasefire, hopefully we will be able to repair it today. According to the Ministry of Defense of DNR, the city of Gorlovka is constantly exposed to attacks from Nazi Ukraine forces. Results from the aggression by Nazi Ukrainian military often inflicts death to civilians and the destruction of the infrastructure of the city. According to the Children's Welfare Department, Donetsk People's Republic DNR has the highest rate of deaths from Nazi Ukrainian bombs. Also, more information in. Four residential houses totally destroyed by night shelling of the urban settlement Staromikayevka. Sorry about the pronunciation. The head of the county district said that the Nazi Ukraine forces opened fire from positions from Krasnogorke from mortar fire. Information on victims and survivors is not known at this time. Also in urban village Starobakievka is located in Donetsk DNR near the contact line. It is adjacent to the Kirov district of Donetsk and is now part of and attached to the capital of Republic. Shelling by Nazi APU previously caused great destruction of infrastructure and the killing of peaceful inhabitants. Also in Donetsk, since the beginning of the war, 159 kilometers of gas pipelines have been damaged and currently 1,135 homes are left without gas. According to the damages, total 25 million worth of damage. As you know from the reports I've just given, the last few days have been horrific, very sad, casualties, deaths, children crying, psychological trauma. For the first time in about eight months, the OSCE has finally documented and reported. Hopefully, this will reach the West. This will reach Washington and Germany, the EU. So, the OSCE Special Monitoring Group observed the shelling of Donetsk City Center for the first time in several months. The OSCE also continued to observe ceasefire violations at and around Donetsk Airport. The violence in and around Donetsk People's Republic, Donetsk Airport, and the city were directly impacted. Residential areas heavily hit and resulted in one civilian death, confirmed by the OSCE. According to them, on July 18th, the OSCE heard more than 100 explosions and another 50 loud explosions on the 9th, July 19th. This also documented by the OSCE. On the 19th, the OSC observed the aftermath of shelling and concluded that the direction of fire at Donetsk Center had been from the northwest, including from the area of government-controlled Pisky and Perovskaya. The OSC Special Monitoring Mission in Ukraine has inspected heavy weapons holding areas to discover that some of them have been abandoned and was not documented. 
On the 18th of July, the OSC revisited 11 Ukrainian Armed Forces heavy weapons holding areas. At one site, this is very important, at one site, the OSCE observed that four multiple rocket launcher systems of which were missing and that the site had been abandoned. At a second site, the OSCE observed three MLRS BM-21 Garage and 122 millimeters caliber were missing. The OSC found the third site abandoned and with none of the six previously recorded self-propelled howitzers on site. At a fourth site, the OSCE observed that two of the 10 previously recorded self-propelled artillery guns were missing. So, as you know, heavy casualties, people dying, psychological warfare, trauma, genocide, atrocities, finally reported by the OSCE. But what's very important that the OSCE has monitored and recorded investigated weapon depots on the Ukrainian side, the Nazi Ukrainian side, heavy equipment abandoned, heavy equipment missing. Today I have two special guests, wonderful warrior queen Oksana, great reporter, brave also on the front lines, and the one and only Olga from No Russia Today and she is an expert investigative reporter. Olga, tell me about this. What is going on? OSCE finally, okay, we know they recorded the atrocities committed by um, the Kiev government, Poroshenko, bombing uh, civilian targets, civilian areas, excuse me. But now, abandoned and uh, weapons missing at their uh, military depots. Well, this is actually not the first time when the OSCE observers report uh, violations of the ceasefire agreements by the Ukrainian side, but uh, in most cases it just goes unnoticed by the mainstream media in the West. They just uh, seem to ignore such messages. Why? Why are they ignoring this? Well, because it doesn't coincide with the, um, the Kyiv government point of view that uh, uh, they are only fighting uh, the Russian army here um, and some terrorists or separatists and there are no civilian casualties. But children are dying. Uh, yes, and ch children are dying from Ukrainian shells in the territory under DPR control, under the Republican control. And these children, the same children, are not dying in the government control areas. Even this fact would uh, point uh, who is, uh, who, who are the ones to blame for the atrocities? We can clearly see who they are. Exactly, Olga. Now, tell me about these uh, weapon depots, these uh, heavy weapons that are uh, missing, uh, which were recorded that, you know, they were in position, but uh, when they returned, OSCE monitors, uh, they were all missing. Well, because, because uh, most of the heavy armaments had never been withdrawn from the contact line by the Ukrainian side, and even those who had been withdrawn uh, promptly returned to the contact line because it is uh, the Ukrainian side that is set up on, on the uh, escalation of the conflict. They are not interested in any ceasefire. Does the United Nations, uh, does Washington uh, uh, notice this fact? Uh, it doesn't seem to be so. They, they seem to ignore all these facts. Or maybe they just don't want to notice them. Olga, again, thanks. Uh, just uh, shocking. But uh, again, th this is not new. This is not new. This is uh, a, a, an agenda from Washington. They've been playing games. Uh, people have to be sacrificed for their sick agenda. We also have a special guest, Oksana, warrior queen, reporter, special reporter. Oksana, tell us uh, to our Russian brothers and sisters about uh, what's happening with OSCE. Are they, are they doing a good job? Are they really monitoring? Uh, and tell us about the weapons that are missing. Can you tell us a little bit in Russian? Uh, 
Я хочу сказать, что впервые за прошедшие месяцы, то есть предыдущий обстрел города Донецка и его центра, был накануне заключения перемирия в Минске, это было 14 февраля. Сейчас же обстрел произошел в выходной день и тоже на фоне подписанных в Минске договоренностей об отводе легкого вооружения, то есть калибром до 100 мм. Миссия ОБСЕ проводит свою работу на территории Донецкой Народной Республики, но, к сожалению, мировая, мировая общественность до сих пор не откликнулась на те происшествия, которые происходят здесь у нас в Донецке. То есть вооруженные силы Украины продолжают обстреливать не только окраины города Донецка, но и центр. И несмотря на то, что миссия ОБСЕ фиксирует эти обстрелы, фиксирует летальные исходы, то есть смерть мирных жителей, Европа продолжает молчать. Sana, bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, one final note from this beautiful country, a goodwill, our dear president, Mr. Zakarchenko, and Minister of Defense, Basurin, from their heart of goodwill, showing the world, they pulled back the agreement with Minsk. They pulled back the weapons back to the original lines and yet when they started pulling back they were hit our our positions were hit not only were our positions hit but even civilians were hit Olga any statement on that well what should I say I think it shows their in their real intentions uh, Kiev government backed by the USA and the EU is doing all it can to escalate the conflict it is not interested in any ceasefire it does everything to go on with its uh, genocide against the russian speaking population of donbass sadly oksana in russian for our brothers and sisters the weapons that were uh, pulled back and yet kiev poroshenko took advantage and started to bomb do you have a comment for us я хочу сказать, что Донецкая Народная Республика и руководство пытаются всячески нейтрализовать конфликт. В одностороннем порядке была произведена демилитаризация населенного пункта Широкина. Точно так же первыми мы начали отвод вооружения согласно, согласно минским договоренностям. Но, тем не менее, киевская сторона продолжает не только обстреливать наши позиции, не только обстреливать населенные пункты, но и полностью город, и не отводит свою технику. Причем это касается техники не только той, которая калибром меньше 100 мм, но и других, таких как минометы, калибр которых 152 мм и другое вооружение. Возникает вопрос, почему до сих пор остается неуслышанным голос Донбасса, голос детей, голос жителей, которые не хотят войны, которые хотят жить мирно и не хотят умирать от, под разрывом снарядов. А почему до сих пор это не слышит Европа, почему не слышат это до сих пор в Белом доме, почему не отвечают на это ваш 